In this video, I'm going to teach you how to fix rolling shutter on your video footage. I'll be using two programs in this video. The first one is free, it's called Gyroflow, and the second is a paid software called Mercalli. Okay, well there you go. Now, for those that want to stick around, I'll show you the results produced with each program and their limitations. I'll then make some recommendations for overcoming these limitations and debunk the misconception that increasing the shutter speed mitigates the rolling shutter effect. And as a bonus, I'll compare the rolling shutter quality of the A7 IV against the A6400, because many people still shoot with that camera and complain about the rolling shutter. Well, hopefully what I show you today will save someone's video footage or possibly save you money in case you were thinking of upgrading to a newer camera because of the rolling shutter problem. Let's begin. Like I mentioned, there's the freeway and there's the paid way. Unfortunately, the freeway only works for cameras that log gyro data in the video, like the newer Sonys, such as the A7S III, A7 IV, and so on, as well as select cameras from GoPro, DJI, and the Insta360. Surprisingly, Gyroflow can be used by some Android and iOS apps as well. I'll post a link to the supported cameras in the description. I'll be working with the Sony a7 IV. Unfortunately, cameras like the a6400 that do not log gyro data cannot use Gyroflow to fix rolling shutter. For those cameras, we have Mercalli. There's actually a third program called Video AI by Topaz Labs that does a great job at getting rid of rolling shutter, but that software deserves its own episode. Some of you might be wondering why I'm not including Sony Catalyst in the lineup of solutions. That's because the free version only lets you export 8-bit. If you shoot in 10-bit and want to render in 10-bit, you need to pay the yearly fee. Besides, this software only works for Sony cameras. And from what I read, it will only correct rolling shutter if you used a native Sony lens. Since I want to provide a universal solution across a larger set of cameras and lenses, this episode is covering Gyroflow and Mercalli only. As a quick overview, I'll show you the results you get with Gyroflow, then I'll show you the results you get with Mercalli. Lastly, I'll show you the results you can expect processing A6400 footage. I know someone wants to know this. Yes, there is less rolling shutter on the A7 IV than on the A6400. Take notes, because I'll be dropping suggestions to help improve the results of the software and ways to work around the limits of your camera's performance. Okay, let's begin. In Gyroflow, everything is pretty straightforward and laid out. Just drop the video, set your stabilization strength, and activate rolling shutter repair. Export, and you're done. Now, you don't need to fully stabilize your video footage in case you want to stabilize with another program. If that's the case, set your stabilization strength to a very low setting. For now, we're only interested in the rolling shutter. Let me take a second to mention as a side note, if you do plan to stabilize with Gyroflow, you need to turn off any kind of assisted stabilization on your camera, like SteadyShot for Sony users. As others have mentioned and after running my own tests, I can confirm that if you use Gyroflow to stabilize your footage, you need to shoot at a higher shutter speed. I can't tell you what shutter speed to shoot at because it depends on the scene, but just know that it will have to be faster than double your frame rate. But if you ask me, I've gone up to four times with a wider aperture with good results. Yeah, you didn't hear it from me. And if you're worried that your video footage will look too much like an action or chase scene from a movie, you can still add that motion blur back in post. But that's a topic for another episode. Okay, here's the original video straight out of the camera. I used an 85mm lens with a half second pan. Later in the video, I'll show you a one second pan, but for this example, I'd rather show a more aggressive case. It was shot freehand and absolutely nothing has been done to the video. So you drag and drop your video footage in the user interface and it will look something like this. Since gyro data doesn't require pre-processing, you can play the file and see the results right away. To just process the rolling shutter, make sure to turn the smoothing strength located on the top right all the way down. Then make sure to check the box for the rolling shutter correction located halfway down the right side. You can manually enter zero in the smoothing strength if .001 bothers you. Okay, now hit play. And as you can see, it will crop in a tiny bit, but if you like what you see, set your codec options on the bottom right. For some of you, this might be 10-bit ProRes. After that, hit the export button on the bottom right when you're ready, and it will export a rendered file to the path in the dialog box left of the export button. And here's the result. Now, here's a side-by-side. -side. And here's a couple frames for comparison. 
Now you may not notice it, but it crops in the slightest amount, but as far as I've noticed, on average, there's very little to no artifacting. I'm not saying it won't happen, because after all, nothing is perfect, and in this example, everything within the frame was still, and nothing is moving independent of the camera motion, like a car going the opposite way. If that happens, you can potentially get unpredictable and unwanted results. Of course, your mileage may vary. But that's it, the free and easy fix. Okay, now let's look at Mercalli. Although this program is not free, it does have features that Gyroflow does not. I'm not going to go over these features in this episode because we're just looking at fixing rolling shutter. Again, if your video does not have gyro data, this is for you. Mercalli is commonly known as a stabilization software which can correct CMOS artifacts like rolling shutter, wobble, and jelly effects caused by severe vibration to the camera, like video footage of people mountain biking. However, Mercalli does allow you to just process the rolling shutter independent of the stabilization, which is what we're interested in doing. Here's the program interface. Let me close this dialog box on the right. Just drop a video and hit analyze. By default, the video will be analyzed for both stabilization and rolling shutter. However, we only want to process rolling shutter because we may want to stabilize as a secondary process. In this case, deselect smooth movements on the top and under CMOS correction where it says turbo, click it and select remove wobble. Then analyze. You can play the video to see the results. The reason the screen looks all glitchy has something to do with this particular program and the screen capture I was using, but don't worry, it won't glitch out for you. Anyway, you can toggle the CMOS correction on and off to see the before and after. If you hit pause, again, you can toggle the CMOS button to see the actual pixel changes of the rolling shutter. If you're happy with the result, just hit export on the top left. Yes, you can export to 10-bit 422, but I'm not showing those steps. Okay, now let's look at some sample footage. In this clip, I'm panning the camera with about a one second pan. I'm not trying to be too surgical with the pan because I want to take imperfections into account for people that are not shooting with gimbals or tripods. Okay, now let's take a look at the fixed version. And now let's look at a side by side. Again, if objects were moving around in the frame, there will definitely be artifacts. Trust me, I've come across this even on slow pans. While doing this test, I noticed that the half second pan gave me the same results, so I did a quarter second pan, and that broke the program. Sort of. Here, let me, let me show you. Let's take a look at this quarter second pan as a worst case scenario. Most everyone won't pan with this speed unless it's an action shot with a whip pan, but you'll see that Mercalli can still give you decent results. And here's the fixed video. At first glance, everything looks great, right? Now let's take a closer look. Uh-oh, look at this. You see you have some artifacting on the bottom here, a little bit more here. Now if I go forward and backward, you don't really notice it too much, but there's a few spots which are kind of obvious, like this one here, and over here on the top left, and again, you have a pixel shift on the bottom. Now, this was an extreme situation. First of all, what you may not notice was that this was a poorly lit scene, and the motion was quite aggressive. I'll admit, this was not a typical shot. So let's take a look at an example that's more ideal for this software. All right, this is a one second pan, and it doesn't look bad at all, it's nicely lit, okay? Now here's the fix. I gotta admit, the results look good. The program did a good job, possibly because it was well lit, or because the pan wasn't too extreme, or a combination of both, I don't know. Now here's a side by side. I looked at this frame by frame and found no major artifacts. Again, nothing is perfect, and it's not to say that there weren't any, but there weren't any that were obvious enough for me to spot. Okay, and here's a freeze frame. Notice the pipe on the left is slanted, and it's been corrected on the right. Okay. Now let's see the same scene with a half second pan. Okay, and here's the fix. And again, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, and we'll stop on this frame here so you can compare. Notice how slanted it is over here, and it's a little bit straighter over here. You know, the rolling shutter on the a7 IV really isn't that bad. So there you go, you have two choices to use for rolling shutter, either Gyroflow or Mercalli. 
Now I've read online people claiming that increasing the shutter speed can help mitigate rolling shutter. And as far as I know reading the text sheets, this is simply not true. First off, the limits of the sensor readout are not improved by increasing the shutter. Well, I tried it on a half second pan and didn't really notice any difference. But, let's see. Now everything else was shot with a shutter of 1 50th of a second. But here is a 1 second pan with a shutter of 1 over 1 60. I still see the rolling shutter, and I really don't see much of a difference. And if I compare it to the 1 over 50, it looks the same. It still looks the same. I don't notice any difference. Now, from experience, increasing the shutter does help significantly when stabilizing video. I'm not going to demonstrate this in this video, but it's just a factoid that you should be aware of. Okay, lastly, let's see the A6400. Here's a one second pan. Sorry to say, but it's not great. Uh, by the way, the sensor readout for the A6400 is about 46 milliseconds, while the A7 IV is about 26.8. Now compare that to the A7S III, which is about 8.7 milliseconds. Okay, now here it is fixed. It looks good. It looks real good. Okay, now the half second pan. Now you can really see it now. Okay, and here is the processed video. And now let's compare the rolling shutter of the A6400 to the A74. And for this example, we'll use a half second pan. Here's the A6400. And here's the A74. The only single suggestion I can make that takes lighting, randomness in both your motion and in the scene, as well as other factors that could destroy your footage, would be to practice making your pan slower than a quarter second if you're not using an A7S III or similar. I would set a half second pan as a good target to reach as soon as possible throughout a pan. And don't forget to ease in and out of your pans. Well, in this episode, we covered how to fix rolling shutter with GyroFlow if you're using a camera that logs gyro data, and Mercalli for non-gyro data logging cameras, and that increasing the shutter speed doesn't seem to help mitigate rolling shutter. We also learned to keep pans slower than a quarter second with a target of about half a second. Lastly, we compared the rolling shutter of the A6400 to the A74. Hopefully this information helped save someone's footage or helped you not look at rolling shutter as a severe red flag. If rolling shutter was keeping you from choosing a camera with great features or causing you to consider upgrading to a camera to avoid it, then I hope this video gave you some confidence and peace of mind. That said, thank you for watching. Until next time, Go capture that once-in-a-lifetime shot.